Thanks for checking out this video. So promised a ranking of the stories from season four of Creepshow, and this is that video. I do want to say a little bit, normally how I do these is I'll kind of talk about a little bit of what I already talked about with the reviews, but then just kind of put in a ranking. Um, for this one, I think I want to talk a little bit more about more of just my personal preferences and why this is my ranking. Uh, and that kind of came about because a lot of people have been commenting on my videos for the reviews for the episodes of Creepshow Season 4. And I've heard a lot of differing opinions on it. And I've heard a lot of interesting opinions. So thank you if you've been one of those people kind of sharing my opinions or sharing your opinions with me. Um, love to read it, especially if they're different. People feel very differently about these stories. So I just kind of want to talk about like why I place each one in a certain space. And sometimes it's kind of more of like a technical thing, but a lot of times it's more of like very personal feelings on the, on the uh, stories themselves, because you don't get a lot of time with these. I mean, they're, they're relatively short. They're, they're little vignettes in essence of horror. So Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, my number 12, the one I enjoyed the least out of the season, is Smile. Um, I get the story behind it. I thought it was a decent idea. I just... Oh, and there will be uh, spoilers in this. I'm talking spoilers. So if you don't want to know anything, don't continue with this. So anyway, Smile. Uh, again, decent premise. Uh, I just thought... The execution wasn't great. I felt like you were missing a lot of development with the characters. I didn't really care about them a whole lot. And I'm not a person who's easily shocked into, oh, a kid in trouble or a kid dead. Uh, that doesn't do a lot for me. I know it does a lot for a lot of people. But, like, prime example, the movie Arrival, having to do with, like, children-related stuff, like... It, it made my eyes roll. So, like, that sort of stuff just doesn't really work for me. Also, like I was saying, I think they could have gone deeper with the characters, should have gone deeper with the characters. That one actually should have been longer, too. They should have had a lot more to the story itself. I just felt like it was too simplistic. But I know some people were saying that they really enjoyed it because it was pretty harsh in its ending, and that was a little bit of a departure from what Creepshow typically does. So I get that. I understand that. It's just... It didn't hit for me. So that's why my number 12 is Smile. My number 11 is Doodles. Now, again, I really like the idea for this one. It's just needed more from the actual characters themselves. I love the whole doodling thing. I think they could have gone and should have gone a lot bigger with the kills. Personally, um, motivation didn't seem to be there for characters all that much. It seemed a little bit too ridiculous and not on a comedic side, which Creepshow tends to do a lot of like comedic stuff, which I'm totally good with. I like that aspect of it. And I'll talk more about that stuff in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it just didn't hit for me. I just felt like it was a little too stripped down. Need a little bit more depth to it. Just too face value. So that's why I put Doodles at number 11. My number 10 is Something Burrowed, Something Blue. I know a lot of people love this one because Tom Atkins was in it. Um, great to see him. I love seeing him. But I'm going to be honest, he doesn't have the acting chops he has or he had back in the day. And that's just to be expected because he's much older now and he's just not as with it. I, you know, he's not acting as regularly uh, when it comes to it. I'm not saying he's not with it as far as like mentally or anything. I'm just saying like he's doesn't have the juice that he had back then. He's not as great of an actor as he was back then. And that's just normal. You know, people age out like that. And like I said, he hasn't been working a whole lot. But the Something Burrowed, Something Blue, again, I like the story idea. I just felt like one of the big things is the acting. I thought that it was some of the weakest acting in the entire season, personally. And it just, again, a little too simplistic. The, the story feels like it makes a few kind of ridiculous jumps, in my opinion, uh, and there should have been a little more, you know, a little more being shown in between those jumps. So that's why I'm going ahead and doing something burrowed, something blue for my number 10. Number nine, the hat. So again, decent premise on this. Oh, and I did want to say that someone who works for uh, KNB, um, the, the company, Greg Nicotero's company that does all the practical effects for this, he reached out to me and watched my video reviewing uh, the hat and the other one in that episode, I can't remember which one it is, and saying that, um, you know, he, he worked on the design of the actual creature inside the hat, which I think was awesome. I mean, that 
is something I really liked about it, the practical effects. And in general, in for the Creepshow series, and especially this season, the practical effects were excellent. So I thought it was cool that that individual reached out to me. Um, I'm always humbled when people involved with these actually reach out to me and say something. That also happened to me with the Shapeshifters Anonymous review that I did, which is still my favorite, all-time favorite Creepshow stories from this series. Um, the it was Greg Nicotero's cousin who was involved with that one had reached out to me and just said he really liked the review and you know I thought and thank you so that that was it's just always humbling and cool but the hat for me the pacing was killing me the pacing was really bad it got really repetitive even though the story was nice and the practical effects were really good and I had I liked the comedy to it and the acting it just the story was not there enough for me and it felt like they just needed to flesh it out a lot more so that's why I'm putting the hat at my number nine uh number eight is going to be to grandmother's house we go I thought this one for me was a little bit too simplistic I thought they should have gone a little bit somewhere more interesting with it it's pretty straightforward werewolf film and you f you figure out pretty early on that it's R little red riding hood which you know this has been kind of done to death especially with werewolf films so it's not very unique story-wise uh i do like the twist ending at the end that was kind of fun so overall i enjoyed it enough um but it's just it wasn't a favorite so it just didn't warrant moving that much further up so that's why my number eight is to Grandmother's House We Go. Number seven, I'm putting Grieving Process. Uh, I liked the um, the theme in that one. The, the I, wanna, I don't even want to say subtext. It was very in your face. The whole idea of grieving someone that you've lost. Uh, I liked the twist in the end quite a bit with the little girl ending up being um, just like his wife ended up being. That was a nice little surprise. And there was some good gore to it. Um, you really had a lot more feeling placed into this because you can understand what this guy is going through. It's a little more emotional and it works quite well because that's something that everyone's going to end up dealing with is the loss of someone very close to you. Uh, and especially when it's a spouse, that's very, very hard, I can imagine. It's literally my biggest fear in life is losing my wife. So um, pretty terrible. But um, but that was a good one. Uh, that's why I put at number seven, Grieving Process. Uh, number six, I put Parent Death Trap. Now, I heard from a few people that they really didn't like this because it went too far into the comedy. I can totally understand that. But for me, I love horror comedies, so you can't really go too far into the comedy realm with me when it comes to horror, honestly. So I think maybe that's one of the reasons I like that one more. I thought the acting was really good in it. I thought it was a very interesting premise. I thought the visual effects looked really cool. Uh, the story moved at a good pace. It was a fun one. I, I I had a really good time with it. So that's why I put number six, Parent Death Trap. Number five, I went with Cheat Code. First of all, Lachlan Monroe is in it, and I love Lachlan Monroe. Very underrated. If you want to see good performance, a really good performance by him, the show Riverdale, if you haven't watched it, he does a great job in that. Also, he's hilarious in Scary Movie, and um, I love him in Night at the Roxbury. He's been in a lot of stuff, and he's... Really, a really good actor, very underappreciated in my opinion. Um, but it's not just Lachlan Monroe. I love the emotional note that they ended up hitting with Cheat Code. Uh, I thought that was really good, the whole father-son thing, which I feel like is a constant issue for parents. I'm not a parent myself, but really trying to connect with your child, especially when they're getting older and not showing as much interest in spending time with you. And I thought they fleshed that out really well and helped you really feel what that character was feeling. So that worked really well. Also, just the concept of taking a video game and putting, you know, tying people to that video game, I thought was very interesting. I thought it was super fun as well. I really, really love what they did with that. So that's why I'm putting number five as cheat code. Uh, number four, I got to go with baby teeth. This one really surprised me. It seemed like a stupid premise in the start, but it ended up going somewhere really dark, actually. And I don't even remember. There was a little bit of comedy to it in the beginning, but man, that got dark kind of fast. And I love the fact that they went after the kind of like fairy lore slash changeling lore uh, that doesn't get mined enough, in my opinion, in, within horror films. Uh, I think it was The Hallow, the movie The Hallow does deal with that. And I think there may have been a few other ones, but very well done. Again, 
Practical effects, excellent in this one. And I, this is probably my favorite practical effects wise because the actual like tooth fairy thing was very disgusting, very disturbing looking, very creepy. And it just hit the right horror notes for me. Plus the acting I thought was quite good in it. But that's why I'm putting it at number four, baby teeth. Number three, hitting hard on the nostalgia for horror community people. George Romero in 3D. I thought this one was a great mix of good zombie stuff, which, you know, everyone wants to see some zombie stuff. They've done a lot of that in Creep, in creep Show stories. Um, going hard at the nostalgia, like I said, actually giving you a visualization of a George Romero character, which really felt a lot like him coming back, which was really, really nice. I actually had the um, enjoyment of meeting him when he was alive, and he was a super, super nice guy uh, many years ago. But he, um, just kind of seeing him like that and, like, bringing him back to life in a way just felt special. Uh, and the story is good, though. I love the whole idea of, you know, zombies coming out of these comic books and it, you can only see them with the 3D glasses. It's such a clever, fun concept. It moves at a great pace. The acting is pretty good. And it's just a lot of fun. Uh, and so that's why at number three, I put George Romero in 3D. My number two is going to be pretty controversial because I've seen a lot of people's comments saying they really hated this one. And that is 20 Minutes with Cassandra. I really enjoyed that one quite a lot. And it's many reasons. One, I think the pacing is quite good. Two, I think for the most part, the acting is really good. Three, I love the practical effects. Once again, you got some really nice big creature design in it. And then the biggest thing for me with this one is how deep it got. And I wasn't expecting it to go so deep. It is literally about, or at least for me, what it feels like it's literally about is um, the baggage that we all carry around with us as human beings and how that baggage can impact other people. And I just, it hit me in a really profound way in the end that I wasn't expecting, and especially not expecting it because there was humor to it as well. And I had even some people comment and say they felt bad for the creature, the main creature that was coming after the woman. And I felt that too. I really did. And so there was so much emotional stuff done with it in a clever way, and it got so deep that I just, I fell in love with it. Uh, I really like that one. So my number two, 20 Minutes with Cassandra. So that means my number one is Meet the Belascos. Now, this is another one. It's kind of similar to 20 Minutes with Cassandra in the sense that I thought it got, it didn't get deep, but it did get to a lot of kind of like social divides we have right now, uh, but painting it under the guise of vampirism. So I think it's not 100% original where they went with that, but it's something that's not done a lot with vampirism. Just kind of having them just living normally in the world and then having, basically having prejudice uh, against them. Um, and where it went in the end, it did get nice and emotional because they did a really good job of fleshing out the, the, the neighbor kid and the daughter and their relationship. And it felt real. Like you could really feel it. You could feel joy for them actually getting together and like finding enjoyment in each other's company. And then for her to die at the end, it's just, it really did get me. And I was like, wow, I wasn't really expecting that from this, especially again, because they had a bunch of humor in it too. So I just felt from that tone, they weren't going to get emotional, but they really did. And it snuck up on me in a really good way. Also, pacing is really good with it, I, I believe. They do go a little bit hard on the um, the neighbor's, the neighbor kid's dad's character. I think they could have dialed him back a little bit, but even though that was the case, I still really enjoyed it. And the practical effects had a, uh, were good, had a lot of nice gore to it as well. Um, so I really liked it. So my number one, Meet the Belascos. So that's it. Though That's my ranking for uh, season four. Uh, I had someone comment and ask if maybe I could do a video just kind of talking about uh, my favorite one from each season, or I don't know, maybe I could do like my favorite five, my favorite three from each season or something. I don't know. If people are actually interested in that, go ahead and put it in the comments. I could also do a full ranked list, which I wasn't necessarily planning on do, doing where I rank every single story that's been done for the Creepshow series. 
Um, the problem with that would be, though, I'm not going to fully remember all of these because uh, some of them have been years ago at this point since I watched them. So, um, yeah, but let me know in the comments if, if either of those ideas are something you're interested in. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. But I would also love to get your lists. And you don't have to do the whole thing. You don't have to give me all 12 or even rank. Just kind of tell me which ones did you like the most. Or, or if you want to do a ranking because that's fun for you, because I think those things are fun, you can put a whole ranking down there or top five or whatever. But uh, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do me a favor. Hit a like on this if you actually liked anything about it. Subscribe to my channel if you like any of the videos I put out because that's your best way to repay me for free content. And hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos. But again, thanks so much for checking this one out. Until next time, keep it brutal.